Well, I've never really shown your plane. I don't know that you've actually shown me baby since you did your big rebuild on it. No, I don't so, think. Well, not not really. Yeah. So give us a walk around. Tell me. So correct me on this one, which I don't think you will correct me, but I think the Pacer is probably one of the best bang for your buck Absolutely. aircraft out there. I think it, bone stock. Uh, it's it's good in the, in the bush and uh, it's so easy to do stuff to it. Now, when you get into experimental, it goes a whole different ball game. Hey guys, so we just got into the edit of this video and I realized right at the start that we talked about how the Pacer is a very good budget option as a bush plane, but then we don't really talk about price. So I've been texting with Toby and wanted to cover this just so I don't get eaten alive in the comments, but uh, sounds like to buy a Pacer, you could probably get one for between 20 and 50 grand for a decent one. And Toby didn't keep exactly uh, tabs on how much he spent on his build, but he thinks he has about 60 grand into it, and that's not including his time, obviously. He did also mention that uh, he's learned that you can build slow and inexpensive as opposed to fast and expensive, just by being able to take your time to look for deals on parts and stuff like that. So anyway, that answers the pricing question. Let's get back to the video. Yeah, so what did this, so this was certified. It was certified uh, a long time ago, and um, I uh, had an incident where I uh, took a gear leg off okay. and severely damaged the fuselage, and so we deregistered it. It was uh, no longer a, uh, an airplane. Okay. And then I talked to the FAA, and uh, they said that I could use a major component. So I took the fuselage box, the uh, cockpit, basically, yeah, and I used that. And the rest of the airplane I built. Wow. And that's how I got uh, certified on it. Okay. And I maintained the, I, I reserved the tail number. So it's still so, the same one. So it's still the same tail number. That's cool. And yeah. was this originally a tri pacer back in the I, day? It was an originally a tri pacer. I converted it to a pacer. And you can do that. That's an remaining, STC. Yeah, re remaining certified. So yeah. that's like, that was that, when you originally had that thing. I mean, we you went everywhere I would go yeah. with your pacer. I, I used to figure that if a 180 could get in, I could get in. Okay. And since we flew with Kevin and Merrick and those guys are all flying 180s, I, I'm okay. Yeah. You know? Um, now, I don't know that I can get in where you get in now. Oh, I... But a lot of that's more <laughs> my age and skill set <laughs> than anything else. So when you did the rebuild, what yeah. else? I mean, obviously, I see the gear legs. Those are not normal. Nope. And the gear then... legs are, are my design. The one thing I hated about the Pacer was the fact that uh, it had the bungee suspension and it was like they were welded solid. Yeah. There was no uh, no spring at all. And uh, as a matter of fact, Kevin used to say I was the one that always brought the balloons to the party. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the suspension I changed out and I had Fox shocks on it originally. Uh -huh. And uh, I it would roll. I, couldn't control the roll. Like sway, you mean? Like you Yeah, no sway when you're control. taxiing, you know, a yeah. big turn you, and you'd get a big dip. Okay, so Tony shocks. Right, Tony shocks, and I ended up replacing my old tail wheel with Tony's tail wheel also. Okay, yeah, that's what I have as well. Yeah, and uh, anyway, uh, so I, I cut the fuselage up and I uh, built a tail section and moved it back 24 inches. So you did extend the fuselage? It, the fuselage is extended 24 inches. Okay. Yeah. And that made a huge difference in uh, my landing uh, stability. The yeah. directional stability was really good. On like rudder, yaw, or pitch, or both? <laughs> rudder. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just had more effective, in longer lever arm. Yeah, makes sense. You know, yeah. And especially with the longer wings, because I was worried that by going out as far as we did with the wings, there's going to be more momentum once it starts to move. Yeah. And so I wanted that like extra lever arm out there. And tell me about the wings then. What the compared wings, to a standard wing? <laughs> they are a standard pacer uh, rib, but they've got a leading edge cuff. Okay. And the uh, control surfaces uh, have been extended an inch and a half in cord also. Okay. So I'm actually three inches deeper in cord. The spars are, are one piece and they're from, I got them from D and E. So they're uh, 17 feet long, each wing. Wow. So what's your wingspan? Um, 39.7, I think, 39.9. And what's a standard pacer? 29. Oh, wow. So you yeah. got a lot of wings. Yeah, I've actually got a whole other bay. Standard pacer 
strut comes in right here. Oh, so you moved the strut too? Yeah, I see. Strut, yeah, because it, this was way too long to, to put the standard strut on it. Uh, it been way too much overhang. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I actually have a little bit more overhang at the end of the st strut than a stock pacer, but it's not much. It's only about 12 inches. Gotcha. Yeah. That's like a wing tip at that point. Basically, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I converted it to stick. Oh yeah, I did notice that because these are normally yoke, huh? Yep, these are normally a yoke and uh, it's all stick. Okay. Uh, it's got electric trim as we talked about. Oh yeah, because you used to have, that was the handle that fell off that yeah, one time, yeah? Yeah, and I wanted my I wanted my flap handle up here. Oh yeah. So I couldn't put my trim handle up there. So that made me think, well, where am I gonna put my trim handle? And then I thought, hmm, I could make it into a switch. Yeah. <laughs> so we did that and um, GRT AV Onyx, uh, both the engine monitor and the EFI IFS. Doors? Or these aren't the standard doors, are they? Nope. These are what they call seaplane doors. Yeah. Um, and uh, of course, I like to see outside, so I, instead of making them half aluminum, I made them all yeah. plexiglass. Plus, I've got the helicopter windows there. And yes. a lot of people say, well, oh, but that makes it easier when, you, when you're landing. I said, no, you don't want to look down there when you're landing. It just... You need to be looking outside, but it is handy when we're landing in brush out here. And taxiing. Taxiing. That's, yeah, because I did that on my old cowling, remember that? Yeah. Yeah, and that did help. Yeah, that's that's really the only place it helps. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've run over brush, you know, and thinking that I was clear and... <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, I may have taxied through a surveying tripod years yeah, ago. Yeah, well. What uh, engine? It's got an 0360. It's got uh, Betterman exhaust on it, so it's probably putting out about... 190, maybe a little bit better. Gotcha. Um, it's hard to quantify. And what's like, I know it's always hard to say that, like a realistic number you're comfortable with for takeoff or landing. I'm pretty comfortable under 300. That's good. You know. Up here. Yeah. Yeah, up here. Yeah. Yeah, down, and when we go down on the on the second round of river or something, it's obviously like it's- Cheating, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like swimming through butter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And what do you cruise at in fuel burn? Uh, I cruise uh, about 100 uh, miles per hour. Yeah. And uh, fuel burn around seven and a half to eight, something up, somewhere in there, depending on what the, the day is. Yeah. And what size tanks? I've got 18 side on each wing. So 36? Yeah. I put 17.9 gallons in. Yes. He, he uses it all. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was whistling through the tube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. What else? Anything else you can think of that's unique? Well, she's got PA-18 tail feathers. Oh, okay. And that's that's one thing that I would do. And, and there's an STC for that on uh, uh, any regular pacer. Gotcha. Because you run out of tail authority on those things. Yeah. Uh, they're short coupled and uh, you just coming into land, you, you can't get slow enough with, you know, you can't get enough angle of pitch. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Well, it's been awesome to see this thing uh, transpire into what it is today. You it's know? It's... Change the way I fly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we've been flying together, I mean, in our two planes, probably longer than any of other, our other buddies because everyone's kind of switched planes. You know, yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, this plane in its first iteration was in uh, your one of your videos. When we landed on the snow. Playing in the snow. Yeah, that was before I was like vlogging. So I yeah. never even turned the camera on myself. It was just like shooting videos. Yeah, I forgot about that. That was probably eight, seven nine, years ago. Yeah. Seven, eight years ago. Yeah, that was yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. So it's really cool to see how far it's come. Yeah. All right, guys, there you have it. Thank you again, Toby, for letting us get the tour of your airplane. He's done an awesome job with the uh, build on his uh, experimental stretched Pacer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And before I wrap this one out, I do want to take a quick second to give a huge shout out and thank you to my friends over at Squarespace for sponsoring yet another video. And for those that don't know, Squarespace is the ultimate way to build a website and run your business. You can start with one of their award-winning templates and craft it into your own beautiful, professional-looking website. But they keep adding new features, and they recently came out with their Blueprint AI, which is a way for you to create your website virtually from scratch. You basically go in, tell it what type of site you're building, you get to choose different layouts for each different piece, and it uses AI to help you generate content. So if you don't wanna to have to write all your stuff for your website, you can just tell 
Squarespace through their AI generator, what it is you do and what it is you're trying to tell about on your website and it'll help generate all the content for you. It's honestly so quick and so easy. It's insane and obviously they have features for every industry, so for online stores, personal blogs, professional photo galleries, maybe you wanna book and schedule your clients, you can do that with Squarespace. Zero experience necessary. You can also buy domains from Squarespace, so they are truly the one-stop shop for everything websites. So if you haven't yet, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to purchase, make sure you use code Trent Palmer. That'll get you 10% off at checkout. Thank you again, Squarespace, for sponsoring this one, and thank you guys for sticking around, and you guys know the drill. Like this video if you do. Subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman. See you on the next one. Peace. Oh, good, oh, good.